Hello there, my name is Kirk and I'm a cinematographer based in Melbourne, Australia and today I wanted to take you behind the scenes on a short fashion ad that I shot recently here in Melbourne for a local brand. So starting off with the inspiration for this short fashion film and I recently watched for the second, third or fifth time, something like that, the Guy Ritchie movie called Gentleman, which stars Michelle Dockery, Matthew McConaughey, Colin Firth, Charlie Hunnam and someone else is in it, Hugh Grant as well. Ray. Any chance of a steak? In what is one of my favorite crime movies of the modern era, but I also watched a few other 90s movies recently, specifically Reservoir Dogs by Quentin Tarantino and Michael Mann's Heat, and particularly those two movies really inspired the look of this film in combination with the opening intro sequence, Cumberland Gap by David Rawlings in The Gentleman movie. So all of these sources put together for inspiration really defined the look that I wanted to put together for this short fashion film, as well as as the sound and the overall feeling that someone were to experience as watching the film. So in combination of Michael Mann's heat, specifically the doc sequence, I really love these sequences here in the movie because it's a big pivotal point in the plot, but something that just looks really, really nice. It's a very, very bright scene. As you can tell, it's in the middle of the day, but because it's shot on old film, it doesn't look very HDR-y. It's a very, very flat, low contrast palette. And that's something that I really, really tried to replicate, especially if you look in the sky section of these scenes, it's not very bright blues and the sun isn't in your eyes very very common for 90s movies as well as Reservoir Dogs again shot on film by Quentin Tarantino and everyone else involved in that production a lot of outdoor scenes that were super bright but didn't have that over processed HDR look that you get on those digital cameras so those two in combination were my inspiration for the look of the project let's get into what was used onto this and that was mainly my Blackmagic Pocket 6k Pro and with the Sigma 18 to 35 lens and and again, an incredible camera I've used for all of my projects so far, but a very, very digital look and requires a lot of production and post-production, sorry, processing in the background in DaVinci Resolve, and we'll get to that later on in the video. But I also put on a Tiffin one quarter mist pro mist filter on the front of the 18 to 35. Without the Tiffin filter, everything would look super, super sharp. And as you can see with some of these shots here where, where you can see the bright sun bouncing off the chrome elements of the car and everything. The Tiffin filter really played a good hand on uh, diffusing those really harsh light sources, as well as aiding the halation effects that I added in later on in this short film. When it comes down to the actual production itself, essentially my mate Looker and I were scouting locations all around Melbourne, trying to find something that was quite reminiscent of the dock location that you saw in the Heat movie that I referenced beforehand. And uh, here in Docklands, it's a place here in Melbourne, was pretty much the perfect place for it. There's a lot of shipping containers and everything around, and because this was a very, very low budget kind of production that we we're doing, again, it was just my camera, Luca in the shoot, who's the main talent in this, as well as the incredible uh, garments that we were using and shooting from, from Mitchell McCabe uh, in South Melbourne. And that was pretty much it. We had no other lighting. We had no other uh, modifiers or anything. It was just the sun. And again, very, very run and gun style shoot, which is why choosing the location was a super, super important thing. So once we chose a location, which was this dock area here in Docklands, which is around about 40 minutes or so away from me, all we had to do was create a bit of a lookbook of what we wanted the character to look like. Again, this short ad was really inspired by Guy Ritchie's Gentleman. So we looked up a lot of pictures of different outfits and everything that they were wearing. So it was very mid-century inspired by a lot of modern men's fashion, including the blazer, uh, the hat as well that Luca was wearing, and a ton of other stuff too, which really, really suited and kind of elemented the idea of the Mickey Pearson look. From there, we decided to come up with a very, very short story. We didn't really storyboard this. We only kind of listed out the exact shots that we wanted, which were including some elements and action sequences that we wanted to get Luca doing in the car, inside the car, like grabbing the gun out of the glove box, uh, looking into the mirror, for example. And essentially, I have a bit of a three-phase effect. Whatever type of shot I'm getting, I get a really wide shot, I get a really close shot, so maybe a medium shot, I guess you could call it, and then I get what you call a textured shot for every single shot that we did. And it was around about 190 shots in total that we actually filmed, equating to around about 30 minutes of total runtime on the camera. And the reason I do do that kind of three-phase strategy is to make sure that whenever I wanted to cut in and get something closer, like show some of the textures in the jacket, or if he's got the cigar in his mouth or anything, it just gives me something to cut to and adds a bit of variety into the film as well. In terms of some more details from a cinematography perspective, I also made sure to get a lot of shot variety, so shooting from different angles and 
and everything. There was a lot of slow motion shots that I did shoot. So for example, I shot mostly everything at 50 frames per second and slowed it down to 24 frames per second when it came to the fashion stuff. But everything else was completely handheld. Uh, there was no gimbal at all. I would have used an easy rig if I had access to one, but instead I decided to break my back and use a Peak Design Strat to kind of stabilize the Blackmagic 6K Pro. As you know, there is no stabilization at all in the Sigma 18 to 35 or the 6K Pro. So there was a lot of uh, post-production stabilization that was done, but everything else was pretty much handheld. But if you are gonna do this and you have a heavier rig, do invest in an easy rig or rent one out for a day. Your, your back will honestly save you for that. But apart from that, everything else was just handheld moving and trying to get different shots. And again, using that three phase approach going wide, close up and then extreme close up getting the details and then cutting in between the variety to tell a story there. The only other gear that we had for this shoot was a smoke machine hooked up to a generator. So that's how we got the Porsche to actually start steaming up and everything from underneath when he started to open up the, the bonnet and everything. And that kind of links back to the whole, not really storyboarding this project is that the only story that we came up with was we wanted to showcase a guy that had obviously broken down or overheated his engine. And we wanted to showcase the fixing process of that. But again, it is a fashion uh, film and there's not necessarily a narrative element to it, just a kind of half narrative, I guess you could call it. Lastly, we'll quickly jump over to the computer and I'll show you some of the elements that went into the post-production stuff. So everything from editing, color, sound, and all that other good stuff. So we'll jump over to DaVinci Resolve now and have a quick look. So let's have a look at my gentleman shoot in the post-production stage. Now, majority of this really happened in the color area because that's where we got the look for the whole project. So let's jump right in. So this is the final image, which you can see, this is one of my favorite shots from the whole uh, short film that we did. As you can see, it kind of pans around just like that. It's a really, really cool shot uh, that I like because it shows the shipyards, his suit. So if we can pretty much disable all of these clips here, the final output, because I want to convert the end signal here on the left, which is raw, and at the latest stage possible, convert it to Rec. 709. I used Film Convert Nitrate, uh, which really uh, obviously transferred it into a pretty awesome state already, although it's very desaturated and kind of grayscale, which I don't like. To kind of open this up, we can see that I use the Kodak 5213 Viz 3 film stock. I set my film color to around about 100, sitting on to print film at 96. My grain strength was quite high at 35, although for some shots, I did actually bring that all the way up to like 90 or so, depending on how much texture I wanted to showcase in the shot. But with these digital screens these days, I can find you can really tell, especially with YouTube compression and things like that. But just for me, I kept it between 35 and around about 80, depending on the shot. And then I kind of worked backwards. So let's have a look here. If we close the effects tab, after I did film convert, I kind of worked from here to the right afterwards, which is uh, essentially how I work with most of the projects. So I balanced out the footage first. This is probably something that I did before converting it just to make sure, but there weren't too many adjustments here. Again, if I go into my printer lights, which is where I usually uh, make these adjustments, I could see that it was probably a little bit too warm to begin with. And again, the goal was to get a bright look, uh, just like in heat, but not an overexposed glossy HDR look. So let's go and through and show how I kind of did that. So afterwards, I brought up exposure a lot just to get the most out of the shadows and everything, but quickly bringing them back down with this cinematic kind of contrast S-curve, which is quite typical, really kind of uh, exaggerating the blacks here. And you can probably hear my computer kicking up at the moment. I think the key with the bright, uh, non-glossy HDR look that I was getting from my inspiration, which was the movie Heat and Reservoir Dogs, was to make sure not to go over 900 in the scopes. But more particularly, if I go into the histogram just here, I think this is really important if you want to get that cinematic feel. And just based off what I've experienced, I keep the bulk of my data under 512. As you can see, the greens and blues kind of uh, uh, creep a little bit over here, but particularly I wanted everything to be below 512 IRE. That's just how I feel I could get that cinematic look. So this is pretty looking good so far, but I wanted to add a bit more character to it. Obviously Film Convert is doing a lot, but I essentially added a little bit more orange and teal into the frame. So if you can see the uh, the highlights here, or the brighter parts of the image kind of uh, get a little bit more of an orange look and then the darker parts down here get a bit more of a blue look. Uh, that's quite simply done by going into the log wheel just here and adding a bit of blue or cyan into the uh, shadows and then some orange into the highlights. 
Moving forward for some colors, uh, I think this part here was mainly to do with the sky. So I used the DCTL plugin to uh, turn this into a bit more of an aqua, uh, of which I then uh, added a little bit more saturation for, uh, and then ultimately um, added a little bit more of adjustment with temperature. Again, these are very small adjustments. So I wanted to bring the sky down just a little bit more in terms of saturation. And as you can see, it's a little bit less blue. And if we scroll over here to the right, uh, one of the Favorite, my favorite parts of this whole process was adding a little bit of halation into the image. You can see if I zoom in onto his collar just here, we have a little bit of orange glow, which is very, very reminiscent of film. And this is just a built-in effect that you can get in DaVinci Resolve. And this is the kind of the areas that I put it in again, 0 0.202, 0 0.614. If I drag up the halation, everything gets really kind of crazy. So I found a nice little middle ground there. We can just slightly do it. I think that's the important thing, making slight adjustments uh, to create your oval image. That obviously goes into Film Convert, and then I add a nice little vignette at the end, which I just utilize using the uh, global tab in uh, the offset here in the primary wheels in order to get that nice cinematic look. But who knows what you're talking about these days. This might not be cinematic to you, but I liked it. It worked out pretty well. And as you can see, if you go through most of these frames here, including these kind of uh, wider shots, again, the exact same process. Very similar process here as well. This is probably a little bit too more blue for my liking, but I can just go into here and adjust it. That's why I like to label everything. And I guess finally, one last thing to know again with this frame, a different one from what I was showing before, um, is that I have some noise reduction added in on the first frame as well, uh, which I think is really important when I'm pushing a lot of colors, especially with my Blackmagic camera. Most particularly with these shots, I've got a lot of dark, dark shadow areas here. So if I undo the noise reduction on this one, you can see there's a lot of green gunk in there. And again, I keep this at around about 7 and 10.3 for chroma but this kind of fluctuates a little bit around in some different regions but that's the cleanup that it does it does an awesome awesome job in terms of the timeline itself uh, although this is not really a cinematography style thing but i guess i would show you just a little bit of what this might look like i had the track running here in purple and a bunch of different sound effects and everything including some birds walking in the distance some construction noises and stuff because i didn't really film any audio at all on the set uh, but just a little bit of texture into it i'm not a massive sound design artist i probably should get better at that but just added another layer into the film especially with closing doors and like opening up this gun compartment and everything was pretty important and that's it uh, i'll leave a link in the description below if you wanted to watch the full thing but uh back to the other version of me looking at that camera thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed my behind the scenes video let me know in the comment section below i'm looking forward to posting more of these for my other projects in the near future have a wonderful day stay safe out there and of course do take care